You can see the teams coming out. There we are in the uh, in the corner of the ground. <laughs> and given the uh, the weather as it is, the referee appears to have decided not to walk all the way across to do the uh, the typical lineups. So we're going to do it on the edge of the penalty area, which is uh, slightly different. But as you can see, Argyle in the full home kit of green shirts, white shorts, and green socks. Portsmouth today in purple. Slightly unusual. We're normally used to seeing the. Uh, these two teams, these two teams always seem to be green versus blue, whether it's home or away. I know a lot of teams these days always wear an away kit somewhere, but uh, Portsmouth in purple today. So Argyle will be hoping, I would imagine both teams will be hoping to, uh, to win a toss today. The wind is very, very severe from one end of the ground to another. Indeed, I'm hoping you're able to hear me okay, because it's... Uh, it's a very, very blustery day and it's coming right across our commentary position as well. So hopefully it's uh, it's not too bad for you. But uh, it is coming from the Devonport end and whooshing its way through the ground. So I would imagine whoever wins the toss here is going to choose to have the wind on their back. Certainly I would imagine the goalkeepers have had a chat with their captain saying that's really what we'd rather you would do today. We'll try and keep the weather chat for a minimum because we're not uh, we're here to try and be John Motson rather than David Brain. But uh, it is clear... It is clearly going to uh, affect the proceedings today. So just as we get ready to do the uh, uh, the toss here, we'll just run you through those teams again. You should now be seeing it on your screen. But for, uh, for Portsmouth, it's Taylor Seymour, Harvey Roo, Stan Brinkman, Jack Watmore, Haji Minoga, Leon Maloney, Gerard Storey, Reese Fairchild, Josh Flint, Owen Teggett and Matthew Casey. And for the Pilgrims, Michael Cooper, Joe Riley, Ryan Law, Ollie Tomlinson, Jarvis Cleal, Charlie Miller, Connor Grant, Josh Grant, uh, sorry, Joel Grant, let's get that right, Clyde Lollos, Adam Randell and Mike Peck. So the captains are coming together in the middle. Jack Watmore off Portsmouth, been at the club a, a very long time, central defender. I do remember the old days when you could pick him out from a mile away from the uh, commentary position as he had wild blonde hair, reminded me of the... Uh, England fast bowler Matthew Hoggard from a distance. He's a bit more shorn these days, is Jack, but he's still a Pompey player. And he's captain in the visitors today. Adam Randell, Argyle centre midfielder. We've seen around the first team a lot this season. Creative central player, given the Argyle armband today. He's got a few more experienced players around him that I'm sure will be uh, offering their thoughts as well, including Connor Grant, not far to the side of him. Joe Riley as well, Joel Grant. Very much like Argyle may have won the toss here because they have the wind at their back as we kick this game off and it'll be Portsmouth forward Reese Fairchild with his foot on the ball who is going to get us going it looks from the way everyone is setting up at the moment that we're going to see two teams playing 3-5-2 we'll see how that develops certainly from an Argyle perspective I think that's how it's going to go so Portsmouth kick us off not the ball long and immediately there is a flag up for an offside as they knocked it long, looking for Fairchild up front. You can certainly see from the way Argyle are setting up already. In the back three, Joe Riley playing to the right of three. Michael Peck there taking the free kick, playing it forward. And Ollie Tomlinson to the left of those. So three at the back for the Pilgrims. Ryan Law on the near side. You can see the... Uh, left wing back he is on loan at Truro at the moment but he is allowed to play in games such as this so it's not a, a sudden recall or anything like that as Argyle get the ball forward here's Joel Grant holding it up and it's been played left Connor Grant 25 yards out might fancy a strike here and he does it's deflected not very far over that was nearly an Argyle goal inside the first minute it's set up nicely for Connor Grant who let fly and the deflection I think it was off of Casey well that was uh that was a real chance. Argyle have taken the corner quickly. Randell and Connor Grant crossed in by Randell to the far post. And again, it was Casey that it hit. I'm not sure he knew a lot about that. It was coming to the far post. It was begging for an Argyle player to be making a late run, as it was. Everyone was a little bit more central, but it's deflected off of Casey again. And there'll be another Argyle corner. Two in the opening 90 seconds here. And much as we often see Danny Mayer and George Cooper colluding to taking the corners for the first team. Here we see Randell and Connor Grant together. As a couple of Argyle players make runs to the near post and one of them is Joel Grant. He's gonna try and work the ball with a little back heel back to Randell to try and clip it in. And it's deflected into the, I think it's into the side netting. Just for a second there, I thought it had gone in. It's gone into the side netting. Randell's gone over to take a, 
another corner, but the referee has given a goal kick. And this should be a good angle from behind the goal here to just see. Well, it was clearly came off a fair child, didn't it? It should have been a corner. But uh, just into the side netting there, a little bit of confusion reigning in the opening couple of minutes. But it'll be a, corner, a goal kick for Portsmouth here, taken long by the goalkeeper, looking for Fairchild, who seems to be their focal point. Argyle win the ball, not once but twice, and then they're able to shift it out to the left-hand side for Ryan Law, who checks back, uses Tomlinson into the feet of Lolos, who tries to lay it off for Law, but it's intercepted. Portsmouth now have it with Story, and now Watmore just trying to bring it out from the back for Pompey. Gets to the halfway line and shifts it to his right, but there's a little bit of two players standing off there. In the end, foul on Law. The referee has allowed play to go on. Law is still down. Argyle have the ball with a supposed advantage, although it is about two on six at the moment. But they do still have it down the right-hand side. Trying to look for Joel Grant at the near post. What more blocks it? It's out for another corner. And we might just see... I think, first of all, the ref is going to check that Law's OK. Well, in fact, he's going to come all the way across to the have a chat to his assistant here. So is the referee considering whether or not that was a bad enough tackle to... Give a yellow or a red. Okay, I'm not quite sure what happened there. He came over to have a little chat with his assistant. It was number six, Minoga, who allowed the ball to get away from him and then slid in on Law. It was a late challenge. Law's fine. And he stayed down for a bit longer. He might have got his opponent into trouble there. It's a credit to him for his honesty. In comes the cross. It's headed towards the edge of the box. Back in uh, by Argyle, but then cleared away. And there is Law chasing back, showing no ill effects of that tackle, which is... Not just good for Argyle, but good, I'm sure, for Messrs. Watton and Co. at uh, Truro, if they're watching this afternoon. Here's Peck with the ball at the back for Argyle to Joe Riley. Into the feet of Randell, who tries to turn. Man tight on his back, but still holds on to the ball. And then into the feet of Lolos, who'd come short, but it didn't quite reach him. Cleal will chase at right wing back for Argyle, but not quite get hold of it. But then they talk about not get hold of it. There's a Portsmouth clearance that... He's blocked, and then Casey, he's uh, not got the frame you would imagine for doing too many flicks and tricks like that, but he did well coming out of a tight situation, got it clear. Peck then doing a good job for Argyle at the same thing. Neither team really keeping hold of the ball here, and Casey, by far the tallest player on the pitch, has to return the ball to Seymour, his goalkeeper, who looks up. And again, it's not the most convincing kick from Taylor Seymour. Touch from Cleal was heavy. Peck tries to deal with it at the back for Argyle. He was robbed of it by Fairchild. Michael Cooper should just be able to keep this in, in his area. Plays it out towards Law. Probably a good decision there from Cooper. He maybe could have picked it up. The ball was inside the area by the time he got to it, but perhaps his momentum may have taken him off of the pitch. And so in the end, he tried to just play it out to Law. It's gone out for a Portsmouth throw-in. It's thrown back to Casey, back to Watmore, who has to retreat even further back and then come out from the back. Looks for a long ball. It's going to be interesting to see how those balls are played into and using the wind from both sides. That was obviously taken by the wind straight into, into Cooper's hands and it was a very easy job for the Argyle goalkeeper. Ball forward, headed clear by Watmore. Randell plays it into trouble a little bit there. Again, it was um, Fairchild that managed to pick it up and Portsmouth have it on the left hand side trying to cross it to the far post there was a run by Maloney but it really wasn't there he wasn't able to get it in that position Cooper will have to go and re retrieve his own ball here no uh, no ball boys around to help with this situation so <laughs> Coop's doing his own running and he will place the ball down. Looks for some options in front of him. Goes short, uses Michael Peck. He'll go back to Cooper. He's good on the ball, is Michael Cooper. So he should be able to be used there to get the ball. And he knocks it long towards Joel Grant. Headed away by Casey, but picked up by Connor Grant. Will look to drive forward. Is Ryan Law in front of him? He could be used. He is. Law tries to come inside. He's checked by uh, Minoga. It's another throw in to Argo down the left-hand side. Good movement by Lolos. Goes back to Law. Comes inside. Looking for options. It's returned back to this left-hand side with Lolos again. Is he going to take on his man and get into the area? Tries it. Then goes into Conor Grant who gets past one. Oh, and they've got it on top of each other there rather. 
Lolos and Grant, the cross came across from Grant. I actually thought the ball might have already gone out there for a goal kick. But it, uh, it was kept in by Conor Grant. This intercepted and then out for a corner. So Randell to take a corner from the left-hand side. Again, Argyle goes short. Randell tries to use Joe Riley, but they went on the same wavelength there. Portsmouth can try and break. It was a little flick and run by Josh Flint. But Riley, using his experience, takes hold of that. And Argyle still have it, moving it through the midfield. Miller gives the ball away. And Portsmouth get out of a tight situation with Maloney. And he tries to go down the left-hand side, tries to transfer Flint to try and push it to the right. But again, Riley using his nous, gets the ball back. And Argyle have it once again. This is Jarvis Cleal with Riley. One-twos between the pair of them. And in the end, they have to go back to Peck. And now Cooper. Well played there by uh, Miller for Argyle. Just coming short to get it off of the back and then Randell will, will draw the foul. This again is where the wind comes into play. Do you try and knock a long one here and use the wind to good effect? Well, it's worked in the end there as Riley clips the ball across. It's misread by Minoga and Law picks it up. Was he checked there? No, says the referee. Minoga can come away with the ball. Portsmouth are blocked off though by Conor Grant having his shirt pulled back still he carries on does Conor Grant gets it inside the area shoots across and again it's hit Casey gone out for a corner I think the referee might just have a little chat here with the Pompey midfield player it was Stan Brigman who clearly pulled hold of the shirt of Conor Grant a couple of times I think we're probably going to see a little bit of leniency such as common in these sorts of games. Referees tend not to want to do too many yellow and red cards in games such as this, but clearly if we'd have seen that in a, a first team fixture I think it would have been the second booking actually because the tackle earlier on on Law would have deserved one as well. In comes the corner, bounces around the six, might fall on the edge of the box to Connor Grant, goodness me, he caught that. The deflection takes it all the way out for another throw on the left hand side. I haven't seen who it's been indicated for, but Argyle look like they're going to take it with Ryan Law getting his shape back thrown into Randell tries to protect it looking to go backwards that was all that was really on Miller Law flicks it around the corner trying to get away from Minoga that's already become an interesting battle between those two Portsmouth can only clear long and Michael Peck will deal with it easy enough back to Cooper and then again Tomlinson this is neat for Margar trying to build a way out from the back in the end a slightly over hit pass from Conor Grant is retrieved by Law and Conor Grant again bursts out, gets between two, is brought down. I think a combination of the two tackles really earns him the free kick there. So 10 minutes gone, that's kind of flying, flown by. We've had 10 minutes already there and already Conor Grant showing some of his qualities from midfield again, Nargal forward. The Pilgrims have had the best of this opening 10. Here's Clyde Lolos just trying to work his way into the box from the left hand side, holds it up, not much on for him, must have returned to Law. First pass blocked, but it comes back to Law. Tries to play the ball through, and Randell will pick it up. Again, crosses first time, fires it in with his left foot. Coming in on the side was Cleal. Got a head to it. And it's Riley to Miller. Back out to Riley, near the touchline. Playing right of three centre-backs today, but he still has a licence to get forward. And he uses Joel Grant inside to Randell. Joel Grant again, flicks it one more. Riley is still forward, and he's good tackle in the end by Casey. Seeing Joe Riley appear in those positions too often. Oh, Argyle have won it back from Randell and the fired across. Lolos didn't quite get on the end of it. I think I saw a flag up at the uh, top of the screen there. So I think if Lolos had made good contact with that, we just seen the replay. Yeah, it's just out of the screen there, but uh, oh yeah, you can just see the flag going up at the top. Had Lolos made contact and that had gone in, I'm fairly certain that would have been ruled out. But it's continual good pressure from Argyle. You probably would expect it with the wind the way it is. It's difficult for Portsmouth to get out of their territory at the moment. As we've said, I'm not quite sure how visible it is to you on your screen watching it. It might well be more audible on my microphone. I'm not quite so certain how much wind is blowing across that, but it certainly is the uh, the main characteristic of this afternoon so far is really how strong it's blowing. But the rain that we had earlier on is rather uh, abated, but the wind has not. And it is certainly hindering Portsmouth trying to get out of their territory. Argyle still have it. Joel Grant trying to turn around three players and 
lost it, so Portsmouth can go down the left-hand side with Tegert. Gets across here, and that could be dangerous, and Cooper had to adjust in mid-air there. I think he lost it in the flight. In the end, he reacted and pushed the ball away. It's quite hard to tell whether he misjudged that and then did really well to compensate, or whether it was uh, a poor piece of goalkeeping in the first place. Well, we'll certainly say give him credit for the hand that he got on it. It's in the end, it's gone out for a corner. I no, was going to call it a left-footed in-swinger, but he'll do this to do well to get this across the wind, will the, uh, the taker. And indeed, he sends it high to the far post. Fairchild is under it, tries to back in and around Law, who stands his, feet, stands his ground well. Gets a tackle in, which I think deflected back off of the forward. It did, and the referee gives a goal kick. Well, that's really the first time we've seen Portsmouth in an attacking area like that. I've put up the pitch a few times, but it's generally been Argyle in control. And it wasn't the greatest corner you've ever seen, it has to be said. But Argyle deal with it, and they'll get the ball forward, looking for Joel Grant. What more won it, but again, you can see those kind of chances playing out to a little bit more if the wind does suddenly squall at the right point. Here's Minoga down the right-hand side for Portsmouth, trying to play it through Law, who's once again not for being passed, and gets the ball over the halfway line. Tries to play it through to Lolos. Is the defender able to read it? He is. Just about the long legs of Matthew Casey got to that and stopped Lolos from being through but it's given, given away by Watmore Joel Grant edge of the box tries to dig out a shot and it's saved by the goalkeeper pushed away to his right hand side Casey will just about deal with it and clear it away but only as far as Connor Grant into Joel Grant's feet trying to turn just about kept out that time by Watmore who made up for his mistake and just giving the ball away previously Joel Grant couldn't quite get it out from under his feet on his left foot as Portsmouth pushed forward and that's an offside against Fairchild, but I think if Joel had got that onto his right foot, and then we're going to see this again here, the ball given away, he wants to get it through, doesn't he, and then you can just see the ball underneath his feet. Still gets the effort on target, mind, and it's a good save by Seymour, low to his right, pushing it away. But once again, as we're only just 14 minutes into this game, Argyle having the best chances so far. Now, Miller having to deal with that ball under tough circumstances, tries to find Riley and it's picked up by Portsmouth. This is Fairchild running into the left-hand channel, gets across in and that was good from Cooper coming out to claim it. Rolls it short as well to try and get the Pilgrims breaking quickly. Connor Grant down the left-hand side to where Lolos, the centre forward, has pulled away. Comes inside Casey, was checked, that's a free kick. Lolos doing his job there as a, one of two men up front, just peeling off to the side, giving a good angle for the pass and then drawing the foul. Not much contact here, as you can see, but he did get by Casey, and there was enough leg-to-leg -leg contact there to draw the foul. You would imagine Argyle will take it short, and they do. Connor Grant to Tomlinson, and it comes back again to Connor. Into the feet of Lolos, turns well, tries to look for Joel Grant. Oh, and again, it just couldn't quite get through into the right position there for Joel Grant. Nothing wrong with the ball from Lolos at all. If Grant had been able to take it in, it was a very difficult one. But if he'd been able to take it in, he was clean through. Portsmouth try and get themselves away again. Played through by Mnoga, but blocked by first Peck and then Randell. Seymour will have to, I was going to say he'll have to kick long, he won't. He goes short and Portsmouth work themselves out from the back. Which they're trying to do, but un unfortunately for them, as was nearly happening again there, Argyle have managed to pickpocket them several times. And once again, Seymour, who's... Showing a bit of frailty in his kicking. He's sliced the ball out. It's no more than 30 yards up the pitch for where Ryan Law can take a throw in. Movement in front of him from Joel Grant, then Lolos, and he chooses the second option. Still Ryan Law holds the ball up. Uses Tomlinson, who plays it down the line, and that was misread by everyone in front of him. And goes out for a goal kick. 16 minutes played here at home park. Argyle nil, Portsmouth nil. If you are just joining us here on iFollow on pafc.co.uk, welcome along to our coverage of this Central League Cup tie. In the Central League Cup, there are four teams in the group. Portsmouth obviously being one of them. Our particular group consists of Bournemouth, Portsmouth and Bristol Rovers. We are yet to play in this, uh, this stage. This is our first group tie. So far, Portsmouth have already played two. This is actually their last one. They've won one and lost one. They beat Bristol Rovers, but lost to Bournemouth. So 
This will indicate where Portsmouth will finish, or at least how many points they'll finish on as Argyle push on. And an offside is drawn there uh, against Joel Grant. So Pompey will know where they are at the end of this stage. Need to win the group to progress. So a win here for Argyle would set them up well. Ball is with the Portsmouth goalkeeper, Taylor Seymour. Slightly better kick from him this time. But it still goes out for a throw-in. We'll blame the win this time or the lack of his teammates pushing on as opposed to his kicking. But Argyle will still have the ball back in front of the away dugout in the fabulous new Mayflower. Here's Randell. Keeps the ball looking towards go to Riley. Was going for a very ambitious crossfield effort towards Ryan Law. But again, the wind has got hold of that one significantly. It goes into the hands of Seymour. No goals here so far. 18 minutes play, but the best chances have clearly come for the Pilgrims. Joel Grant's low effort pushed around was probably the best of them. And a couple of corners that cannoned around the six-yard area early, very early in the game, in fact, in the first couple of minutes. Argyle have the ball at the back with Tomlinson, who plays it along, so, along to Peck, Randell. And now Miller, looking to go into the channel for the run of Jarvis Cleal. That's unlucky, really. It just got caught in the wind and skimmed a little bit off the turf. That looked for a second to be a very, very nicely judged ball from Miller. But it disappeared away on the bounce. Portsmouth will have a throw in once another ball is found for them. Not quite sure what happened to that first one, but it disappeared away down the uh, into the dressing room block. And what more? Central defender but with a long throw goes off to take it so he can launch it down the line. Bounces and Argyle are able to deal with it. Riley going backwards. Is that to play? I think that was intended to go back to the goalkeeper. It didn't get there. Peck now brings down Maloney. I'm fairly certain that the ball back there from Riley was meant to be all the way back to Cooper. He under hit it or it got caught in the wind, whatever you might want to say. But in the end, it goes between Peck and Tomlinson. All Peck can do is reach for the ball. Now, presumably the referee can't book him because we've seen a very late tackle on Law and then a shirt pull on Connor Grant. So he can't book Michael Peck unless he just doesn't have any cards in his pocket, unless there's some verbal bookings going on. That's been known. But it will be a free kick to Portsmouth. Oh, God, look, they've got quite a high line here. I guess they're kind of banking on Portsmouth's ability to hit this into the wind. In fact, they can't even place the ball at the moment. It's oscillating so much that it's, it's getting very difficult for him to even place the ball. You're going to have to take it quickly, I think. Flint to take the ball. Take the kick, I should say. Left-footed, whips it in. It's a good delivery to the far post and it just bounces where well, Watmore couldn't get there. I'm not sure if Portsmouth thought they were going to be that high up there, really. I don't know whether they were expecting something a bit more high and looping. To my eyes, that was a good delivery flat and difficult to deal with for the defenders but what more gambling at the far post as we see a good angle from behind the goal there it really needed at least one or two Pompey players to be arrowing in on that at the back post and they didn't do so so Argyle are able to come away with a goal kick Cooper takes it trying to use the wind again to go over the top towards Lolos didn't quite work Randell diminutive midfielder but still wins the header in midfield and wins the ball back scrapping as well although Flint has just been able to Shoulder it off him. Then Rue goes inside, but Portsmouth have to go all the way back to their goalkeeper. I'm a little bit surprised Argyle aren't pressuring a little bit more, considering he's not shown the best kicking ability so far. That one he chips into the centre circle against the wind. Good header by Peck, but it falls to Storey, who uses Fairchild. And now down the left-hand side with Teggett for Portsmouth. Was he pulled back there by Cleal? The referee's blown, but I think he's both the throw-in rather than the foul. Throw into Portsmouth right on the halfway line. Taken short, Fairchild knocks it back to Rue, comes inside. Good pressure from Argyle, has won the ball back again there. They had a bodies over. Now Cleal rolling the ball under his feet, trying to go down the line. Goes down, wants a free kick. I think it's going to be a throw in to Argyle. The tap challenge came across and got enough on the ball. So the Pilgrims again will push down this right hand side. We're approaching the halfway mark in this first period and while Argyle have been mostly on top so far the wind is very much in their favour and they will be looking to get at least a goal or two you would think in this first half to seal that 
advantage. Ball to the far post there, just a little bit over here. Ryan Law was making the run in from the left wing back position, trying to meet his fellow wing backs cross. But once again, I don't want to drone on about it because you came for the sport, not the weather, but it's very much a, a feature with balls like that being used to be playing into the far post, but the conditions are affecting it somewhat. And it means that once again, we start with a Portsmouth goal kick. See more to take. Fires it, that's a better kick. Flattened into the wind. One, one again by Peck, he's won a lot of headers so far. The central of Argyle's three at the back. Randell to Cleal. He's got Riley making a run around the outside of him if he wants to use him. Cleal gets into the area, tries to tear it up for Riley. That was under hit. And Portsmouth are able to clear away. I think that just about went out of play. It's going to be a throw in for Argyle in front of the dugout. You can see Kevin Nanskeville in charge of the side today. Barking out some instructions. Ball thrown into Lollos. He's got a lot of space here. Lollos gets hold of it. The space to this left-hand side if he can work it towards Grant as well. Conor Grant doesn't quite get to it first. Wins it back enough. And then Tomlinson comes across to tidy up. Although he'll have to go out for a Portsmouth throw in. The player involved in that challenge. I think it's Maloney, is it? It is. Has stayed down. I think he just got a, a bit of a bang now. I don't think it was anything too serious but he's just taking a bit of a time to get to his feet and now he's gone back down again and it's maybe a, a bang on the foot I think I'm not quite sure he's actually trying to get his left boot off that's not always the smartest thing to do you're going to uh, try and get that back on again if there's any swelling but he's uh, got some pain in his left foot clearly here is uh, Leon Maloney that gives us a little break in play as the Portsmouth physio comes across to deal with that. So we reached the 24 minute mark. So to, very, to round up the game so far, there's not been masses and masses of chances. We've seen one important save made by Taylor Seymour when Joel Grant got a shot away low to his right. Other than that, lots of Argyle pressure around the area. Connor Grant, in fact, had a shot deflected not very far over in the open exchanges, and that led to a series of Argyle corners which Portsmouth struggled to deal with in the wind. The Pilgrims will certainly be the happy of the two teams so far in terms of possession, chances, territory, etc. They'll probably fill all the key stats except the main one, which is goals. No goals in this fixture as yet. Portsmouth have managed to engineer a corner or two, or at least a couple of free kicks into Argyle territory, which have been delivered pretty well, but had no one coming in onto the back of them. So Maloney is walking on the near side, you can probably just see him at the bottom of your screen there, but he uh, doesn't look very comfortable as Argyle try and win the ball back in a bit of a midfield scrap. Maloney is waved back onto the pitch and he might get a touch straight away here, he's on the right hand side. First chance to have a little bit of a run. And he did that okay, we didn't quite get to the ball which was rather over hit. He's still adjusting his footwear, but I think it'd be okay to continue Will Maloney. Law to take a throw in for Argyle. Joel Grant is up the line for him. Connor Grant is inside, returns the ball to Law, who flicks it down the line with his right foot. That's probably going to bounce out for a throw in further down the pitch. So everyone will just mirror image, move up to the other end, and Portsmouth will take a throw from their right wing back area. The two sides playing a, broadly speaking, matched up patterns of play has meant certainly when it gets into midfield six bodies in the center of midfield it's got a little bit scrappy in there at times neither side has really passed their way through the combination of the excess of bodies plus the conditions have certainly played into that as you can probably hear another squall blows across my microphone here you can see the shirt on uh, the throw-in taker Hajman Noga just indicating what I've been saying here's Miller who has used the ball well and does so again, trying to get the ball into Joel Grant. Nearly, nearly got there. Portsmouth clear, Casey's clearance charged down by Lolos and out for a goal kick. Just nearly, nearly got through to Joel Grant, who just there was just indicating a, an applause above his head towards Charlie Miller. Just not quite sure once again whether or not that might have been offside had the ball got through. These days, assistant referees are, are asked to 
uh, to not indicate until the ball gets to the player. So the, the assistant did that correctly. I just wonder if Joel had collected it. The flag might have gone up, but I can't really worry about that in the first instance. It was certainly a good ball from Milat, and we'll give some credit to the defending as well, preventing it from getting through. Kick towards the halfway line. Held up in the wind again. Nagar will see that out for a throw in on the left hand side. Law to take. Lolos trying to find some space. Gets forward, tries to turn. In the end, tries to go straight through a purple jersey and Portsmouth can get it away with Fairchild playing it sideways. Held up and then played down the left hand side looking for the run of Harvey Rue. But again, it was slightly ahead of him. And Argo have got the men over here. Cleal and Riley as a duo get the ball forward in towards Randell Riley again pushing down the right didn't quite come off the first wall pass from Riley worked nicely the second one just ever so slightly over hit back to him by Randell with a nice idea from Argyle you can certainly see the, the Ryan Lowe philosophy from the first team all the way down through other teams at this football club at the moment trying to do the kind of play that we would see the likes of Joe Edwards or Byron Moore, whoever would be playing down that right flank. Portsmouth trying to attack down their left. Riley defends it really well, clears it. It's right between the two centre forwards, so Casey is able to come away with it for Portsmouth and then a late tackle by Riley on Teggett. And there'll be a free kick to Portsmouth. We're about uh, 10 yards or so inside Argyle territory. They haven't got too many in an attacking position, so one assumes they're going to play it short, or low at least. They do, into Fairchild's feet. Turns away from Randell, had Peck alongside him all the way there and had to retreat. Ball is in the centre with Brigman. Back again to Casey, who tries to fire it long, but that's over hit. And it's going to go out for a goal kick to Argyle. They're sort of caught a bit betwixt and between Portsmouth. You can see at times they want to get the ball short, they want to get the ball down and play. And there are lots of bodies blocking that off. And then so when they try and go long and try and find particularly Maloney and Tegger to are playing in the channels, when they try and do that, the wind is howling and it's just difficult for them to get something effective on the ball. So Argyle clear away with Cooper. It's out for another throw in as we approach the half hour mark no goals not really a modern classic but then it has been difficult for both sides to get the ball down and play example there as I speak as Brigman tries to connect, collect the ball and it rather fires off his shins and out for an Argyle throw Law looking to go down the line throws it in towards Lolos who beat the gamble that Minoga took. Went really well played by Randell. Spins and then plays it towards Riley. Outside him is Cleal. Trying to square up a defender. Trying to get him to commit. Cleal playing with the ball under his feet. Then tries to go around the outside. Can he get the cross in? Does so low. Watmore's diving header was missed. But cleared away by the second defender. Casey. Miller collects it. Has to go back to Tomlinson. But Argyle have done well to retain it. Into the feet of Joel Grant. Takes the ball in. Into Randell. Out to... Ryan Law, heavy touch, but he retrieves it. Now Randell, a little Cruyff turn, trying to hold on to the ball. Did so just. And then Law, that's probably a push, I think, on Minoga. Didn't really disguise that very well there. Ryan Law. If you're unfamiliar, of course, with Argyle's left wing back, his name is Law, L-A-W. I'm not just saying our manager's name in a northern accent. Free kick to be taken by... Portsmouth defender Matt Casey fired up in the air held by the wind tried to be collected by Flint miscontrolled but fell to his teammate Noga and then out from the back comes Gerard Storey nice little run by here Margall managed to put up a green wall to stop it going any further and eventually won the ball back here's Cleal from right wing back coming all the way over to the left and finding his opposite number Law then Connor Grant to Clyde Lolos flicks inside holds the ball up only got one to aim at in the middle that's Joel Grant and hits it beyond him. And out for a goal kick. It was neatly done there by Argyle, moving down the left-hand side, but with Lolos pulling out to the left-hand side to collect it, there was really no one in there for him to... Well, there was one person in there for him to aim at Joel Grant, but it was a, 
a tough ask to drop it right on his head. So it'll be another goal kick from Taylor Seymour, who I would imagine will be happy to see the half-time break, just so he can get in, switch ends, and we don't actually be able to kick past the halfway line in the second half. It's been a bit of an arduous task for him. This time the ball falls to Minoga, who's hassled again by Lolos. Comes away from it, does Minoga, but blocked by Law. And then it's out for a throw into Portsmouth. Minoga to take into the feet of Flint. Flicked on by Law, then Connor Grant. It comes off of Lolos, who manages to pick up the loose one. Just plays it ahead of Connor Grant and Portsmouth clear again. And then we'll have a throw in on their right-hand side. Don't forget, of course, we'll be back here again at Home Park in four days' time. Skybet League 2 action between Plymouth Argyle and Mansfield Town. With the Pilgrims in fine form, any excuse to get to Home Park and cheer the players on will be greatly received by the Green Army at the moment. So we hope to see as many of you as possible here in the ground on Saturday. If you need any extra incentive, you get yet another visit from Graham Coughlin. He's been here a few times in the last year as... Bristol Rovers manager, but he's now moved on to Mansfield. And he'll come back and uh, see us once again. Can't keep him away from the place. He'll be here on Saturday. Here's Conor Grant for Argyle, pushing forward, brought down. And it's going to be a Pilgrims free kick. Slightly left of centre, 40 yards out or so. Randell is placing it. Got the armband on today. And he's got responsibility for taking this kick as well. If he takes it right-footed, then it's going to be swung in towards the goal. Conor Grant is there as well. He might want to stand it up to the far post with his left foot, counter the wind a little bit. Although he seems to be drifting away from it. They're going to try and play him down the line. That was a decoy. So Randell steps back, does play it right-footed. It's a little clip. It's there to be attacked. It's headed up in the air. Is it going to fall to the goalkeeper? He was unchallenged, but he still punched it. And it might fall here for Cleal, who fires the shot across. And it was just wide. He snatched it a wee bit, went through a crowd of players. Well, an interesting decision there from Taylor Seymour. And the first delivery from Randell was excellent, and I think it was Watmore that got ahead to it. We went straight up in the air. It was clearly falling inside the six-yard box. Here we see it again. So the ball straight up in the air. But the goalkeeper, completely unchallenged, decides to punch. Lolos gets a touch on it, and as it falls to... Uh, Jarvis clearly shoots and fires it across, but it's an interesting choice there from the goalkeeper. I do remember many years ago here interviewing Luke McCormick for the Argyle programme and asking him what was the best bit of advice he was ever given in his career, and he told him that Paul Starrick's advice was if you're never sure, always punch. If you're never sure between the two decisions, punch rather than catch. But I think he would refer to positions where you're being challenged rather than when you're completely unopposed such as that. And in the end, it wasn't even a very good punch from the goalkeeper. But he got away with it. And Argyle have the ball back now with Riley. Played it rather blindly inside. Minoga picked up on it. Then slid through on a tackle. Kept the ball. And Riley again tries to come through a little gap. Doesn't manage it. <laughs> then bodies go everywhere from a challenge there from Story. Portsmouth might be able to break forward here. This is Flint holding it to Maloney. Flint goes outside him on the right. Maloney, 20 yards out, thinks about shooting. Now tricks his way into the box. Plays towards Fairchild. Is that a handball? Not given. Randell gets something on it, but it's fallen for Maloney again on the edge of the box. And then Argyle have just again got enough green shirts back. They get it away. Connor Grant out to Clyde Lolos on the halfway line. Holds it up, goes inside to Connor Grant and then makes the run down the line again. Lolos, can he keep it in? Not quite, I don't think. No. Out for a throw in. That was unlucky. Just couldn't quite stretch his long legs out enough there, Clyde Lolos. It was a good interchange between him and Connor Grant in the first place. Referee is just having a chat with Mike Peck about something. Not quite sure what. Peck seems to be remonstrating against something. I think it might stem from... I certainly thought that Fairchild might have handled the ball in the build-up to the last half chance for Pompey. Perhaps... Peck is still making that point. That looked like a foul throw with a ball up, foot up in the air there by the taker. Not given. And he'll have another go here, Will Noga. Let's see if he does that again. I rather thought his back foot came off the ground as he tries to launch it down the line. That was certainly safer. Throws it there. Headed forward again by Tomlinson. And then Connor Grant. Lolos. Laws made a run down the left-hand side. He chooses to go to the right for Randell. And then switch quickly. Right wing back. Cleal. 
holds it up. Randell offers a run in front of him. Cleal checks, uses Riley. Cleal again, he's got time to turn, just miscontrols it, but he's still got Acres to run forward into. You can use Miller and then Connor Grant. Back to Tomlinson, Argyle keeping it and using their shape just to move the ball around, trying to get Portsmouth to do some running, trying to find a gap somewhere. Miller, back to Peck. Argyle have got deeper and deeper, but they have kept hold of the football. Riley into Randell. That was a nice interchange. Riley now pushes forward. That's drawn a couple of Portsmouth defenders. Have Argyle now found the gap they were looking for? Riley shoots from distance. It was on target. It was saved by the goalkeeper and then met first by Minoga, who got between Joel Grant and Ryan Law. Law now wins it back. Referee decides to give a free kick. Neither way, it goes into Lolos inside the box. Tries a little trick. Flicks it towards Connor Grant. Shoots across the goalkeeper and it's in. No, it's not. The flag's gone up. The flag's gone up. The flick from Lolos into Connor Grant was offside. Firstly, I, was ex I think I was just expecting to give the referee a free kick one way or another when Law and Minoga went in. Law got there first. Was hit in the back by Minoga. As we just see there from the replay, Grant's finish through the legs of the goalkeeper was just fine, but he had been offside before that as the ball was flicked to him by Lolos. And Argyle do not have the lead as I thought they did just a few seconds ago. It showed the, the patience, though, from the Pilgrims. They kept the ball for a long, long time, and it looked like they were going nowhere, but they retained it, and when eventually... Riley was able to do a 1-2 with Randell. It put Riley through. It was his shot from distance. It didn't look to be all that powerful, it has to be said. But Taylor Seymour spilt it. And from there, Argyle continued to try and build their attack. But it sh again, it showed the, the patience that it eventually drew the space they were looking for. Portsmouth have a free kick then inside the centre circle. Taken short and retained through their two central defenders. Casey and now into Story. He's pushed back, has to go back to the goalkeeper. Good pressure from Argyle. Goalkeeper's kick is not convincing, and Argyle have won it back. Lolos, 20 yards out, just trying to dig the ball out of a space. And again, Casey does well to get out of a tight area. Cleared forward. Tomlinson tries to chest it down, played himself into a bit of trouble. Foul by Maloney, who does well there. Takes a quick free kick. Fairchild down the right hand side for Portsmouth. Good defending from Peck, did the right thing. Got his body in the way. Calmly done by Mike Peck. And it's knocked out on the right-hand side for a throw-in. I don't think Fairchild will take it. The central striker for Portsmouth puts it down for Haj Noga. Is he going to go for a bit of a launch? I don't think so. Most of his players are just in front of him. So thrown into Fairchild. Gets it back to Noga. Tries to cross. Deflects off of Law. Who tries to bring it down. Then... He and Tomlinson rather get in each other's way. Fairchild from the right, gets the cross into the near post. Didn't quite fall for Maloney. Does on the edge of the box for Brigman. Shot blocked. Portsmouth still have it. No, they don't. Giving the ball away to Connor Grant. Lolos. Laws run past him. Lolos can't really find him. He does the right thing, holds it up, and then turns neatly. Gets away from Casey. Tries to get back underneath him. No foul. You can see what Lolos was trying to do. Trying to get in front of his man and draw the foul. But Casey did just enough legally. Now Tomlinson's caught on the ball. Maloney comes away with it. I think that's rather fortunate for Margar there. I didn't really see a foul in that, I have to say, from Maloney. Apologies if that wind is again whistling across the mic. Here we'll see a replay. I think Maloney's done OK there. I don't think there's a lot wrong with that. But uh, Margar will have the free kick just inside their areas where it's going to be taken from. Anyway, by Cooper. Four minutes to go in this first half. Cleal on the right-hand side, matched up by a couple of Portsmouth players. Then Riley goes into the feet of Joel Grant, who tries to hold off Watmore, but the central defender gets the better of him. Down the left-hand channel, Reese Fairchild does the run-in, shoulders off Peck, holds it up well, gets inside the area, plays it across Cooper. And that really was neither fish nor foul there from Fairchild. He wasn't quite sure whether he was going to shoot across or try and find one of the two runners that were coming in. Excellent work in the first place. Nothing wrong with that shoulder to shoulder. I think he's trying to place it in the far corner. I don't think he's trying to use the two runners, but with his left foot, it was always difficult for him leading back. And I think in the end, it was uh, probably the wrong decision. But Portsmouth have it back. They're just finishing this half well here. Ball comes in from the left-hand side, headed on by 
an Argyle defender and it just comes to Maloney and he's got to do better there. The cross came in, it was flicked on by an Argyle head and it fell to Maloney at the far side. Well, that's probably the best chance of the game with only three minutes or so until half time. Well, he got injured early on in the game, did Leon Maloney, but he seems to have shrugged that off well enough. But what he's got to try and do is shrug off at half time the fact that in his brain he probably knows he should have just put Portsmouth in front as the ball fell to the far post. He couldn't quite. What he was trying to, you can clearly see what he was trying to do, just angle it away from Cooper. He's just played a bad kick there, but Portsmouth did not retain it. Pet clears. And with the wind really, really gusting around now. Casey then what more than Casey again trying to bring it down. Good battling by Randell, just hustling to get the ball back. Just Randell, then a lovely ball to Lolos. Edge of the box, shoots from 20 yards and picks out the opening goal for the Pilgrims. It's only just a minute or so since Portsmouth will feel they should have gone in front. But Argyle have made the breakthrough just before half time. Lolos right from the edge of the D. Faultless finish into the top corner. Nothing the goalkeeper could do about that one. And Argyle have the lead. Credit to Adam Randell, who battled hard to get the ball back and then played the ball to Lolos. And then there's a beautiful angle from behind the goal there. There's the young Greek centre forward. Curls into the top corner to give Argyle a lead, which they will presumably have into half time. There is still a little bit of time to go, about 90 seconds or so. I don't see a fourth official, so I don't think we'll get a. Uh, an indication of additional minutes. Argyle might even look to get another one before half time. We saw that kind of uh, play, didn't we, against Morecambe in the league for the first team. Here's Law, then Grant, in it comes, chested away by Casey. I sense if there'd have been nine or 10,000 Pilgrims in here, they'd have all claimed for a handball there, but it was off the chest. Now Minogue can break away. Maybe then we aren't done for goals before half time. Minogue, he's got Fairchild to his left, might try and go himself. Flicked off his feet by Peck. It was an important interception. Argyle still have it at the back here with Cooper, but he'll clear and it'll go out for a throw in. Well, with the right back there, Arj Minogo went a long way, got to the edge of the area. He just thought he was maybe between two minds there, whether he should pass it or shoot. And as he made that crucial half second, split second decision, turned inside onto his left foot and Peck did just enough to get it off of his feet. Here's Fairchild moving inside, gonna shoot from distance here, and he does. Cooper saves, loose ball comes out, Cooper saves that as well, and it goes over the top. Call into action. Well, all of the action in this half is coming in the last five minutes here. That was a long range effort from Fairchild, which Cooper saved. And as the follow up came, it was from Josh Flint. I rather think that Michael Cooper will have feel he should have done better with the first effort. But he certainly did very well with the second one, getting to his feet quickly. That's what you're taught to do as a goalkeeper, to react to the second one. And he did so and pushed that over the bar. Portsmouth have a corner. They still have another chance to equalise before half-time. Comes in, edge of the six-yard box. And even Casey, who's about eight and a half feet, couldn't get his head to that one. And it goes out to an Argyle throw as we go past the 45 minutes. So anything that we play from now on is going to be at the discretion of the referee. Law to take the throw in. Into the feet of Lolos. Tries to turn. In a deep position, does really well actually Lolos and brings that out and gets it out to the right hand side where Riley's got much more space for Argyle to bring it forward. Cleal. Riley again into Randell. Is he able to turn? He is. Lovely play by Randell. Turns, gets it out to Cleal. Inside towards Joel Grant. Oh, it was under hit from Cleal as he tried to get it. And he might have another chance here. No, he won't. Partially because he's blocked off by Watmore. And partially because the referee's whistle has gone. He played about a minute or so of added time. Well, goodness me, that was the first half that wasn't exactly capturing the imagination up until the last five minutes or so of the game. But we did see a couple of Chances out of nowhere for Portsmouth. Leon Maloney will have probably thought he should have put Pompey ahead. And after he just prodded a shot wide, a minute later, Argyle were up the other end, taking the lead through a wonderful curling finish by Clyde Lolos. Argyle pushed on looking for a second in that short time before the interval. And in the end, it was Michael Cooper at the other end that was having to do the business, making one save from Fairchild and then a second quick one from the following up Flint. So as it, as it turns out, 
we go in at half time with Argyle 1-0 up all the action coming at the end there but it was uh, it was really a, a very exciting end to the half one for our uh, our highlights uh, editors down in the uh, in the gallery trying to put that together um, what you don't want is it all happening at the end of the half but I'm sure they've put together uh, a good effort so hopefully we'll be having some uh, some highlights coming through in uh, just a second here we go so with uh, some bits of the game this is where Conor Grant and Lolos managed to get themselves under their feet rather it was blocked off at the near post by Watmore but there you see the interchange between the two there's Grant just getting the ball across and in fact it was the goalkeeper clearing it against the defender wasn't it there's the ball to the uh, far post that Cooper just caught in the air. You can see there from the... That's a great camera shot from behind the goal, isn't it? Being able to see that. This was the first good chance, really, of the game. Joel Grant just digging it out from under his feet, getting it on target. Poor ball there from the defender, as you can see. But it's, that's a good angle for seeing where Grant couldn't quite get it out from under his feet. This was a free kick, which the goalkeeper makes a bit of a hash here of punching. And as it falls to Cleal, 12 yards out or so, he has dragged the shot just wide. Certainly there you can see the goalkeeper is unchallenged. He probably can catch that. I think you actually just can see a run there, can't you, from Tomlinson that perhaps spooked him a little bit. So maybe he did make the right decision. Long shot there from Riley was palmed away. Portsmouth looked like they'd done enough to bring this away. Oh, we're not going to see the rest of that just for the time being. But Riley's shot was on target. Well palmed away there from the goalkeeper. And this is literally just seconds later as Argyle have won it back. Lolos played it to Grant, who fires across and seemingly put Argyle in front but actually the flag had gone up we won't be able to see really from this angle whether or not he was offside but I did think in real time it looked the right decision and here's the goal Randell who had hassled to win the ball back so well plays it there lovely ball put his left foot into Lolos and he does what good strikers do which is take the decision early on to take a touch get himself set and fire it all in one movement and Argyle had the lead but it was precarious there's a shot from Fairchild good save from Cooper the first one even better one the second one pushing it up in the air this will be a great angle for it so you can see good save in the first place good reaction save for the second one I was maybe a little bit harsh at the time saying that the first save was not as it could be and actually from that angle you can see the ball was going away from Mike Cooper and he made a smashing stop down to his left and an even better one getting up so there's the story of the first half you've seen that plus some highlights we're going to take a little uh, break here at half time just to uh, get ourselves set but we will be back in about 10 minutes or so just before the second half begins. So we leave you from Home Park for the time being, but don't go too far. We will back you for you for the second half of this Central League Cup game, where it is Plymouth Argyle 1, Portsmouth 0. Actually, I, I had to correct myself because well, I thought you pushed it. I thought you pushed it into the pass the forward, yeah. but when you see the chance behind the goal, you can see how it was curling away. Yeah. From. I thought it was straight yeah, at him, and he just. I, I, I thought he pushed it away poorly, but he did. I'm looking at the behind the goal, he did really well. But, yeah, the, but the second one's the one in it to get up and stop. It.
This happened for the ladies game, I was expecting him to be here for the ladies game.
um, hopefully it's around the Vernon, because I'm not, I'm not here, well I am here Saturday, but I'm not here on, I'm uh, ready in Devon on Saturday. I think you'll be up there. I've only ever done them from up there. Um, because I've only been doing it this season, but I'm told that the ISDN has been put in, so. <coughs> I'm told I'll be, I'm, I'm told I'll be up there for Saturday. I'm going to get you guys there. I'll get you Paul works in his club here. chance that we thought about it, but there's a reason that we can't do it. Yeah. People have no idea what actually goes on. You'd get like, we'd have games against Exeter or something which would sell out or nearly sell out. So, Why don't we get the temporary seat in the back of it? I said, because it costs about 50 grand to install it. We're going to put it there and sell another thousand tickets. They're 22 quid a pop. Work out the deficit itself. Yeah. Let's get some extra seats in to lose 25 grand. Are they going to tell me when I can go?
Yeah, there's someone coming on. Joe Riley's gone off name. Okay, welcome back to Home Park for the second half of today's Central League Cup fixture between Plymouth Argyle and Portsmouth. If you missed the first half, you missed Argyle taking the lead through a tremendous curling strike by Clyde Lolos towards the end of proceedings. Argyle kick off the second half. <laughs> and we're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, bit of digging here because I've got three subs on my uh, Argyle team sheets and the uh, number 18 that has come on is not one of them so I'm hopeful that someone might give me some uh, some info about who that is in just a second but uh, Michael Cooper comes out from the back there to uh, to claim a ball and Argyle will try and push down the left hand side here's Lolos the goal scorer cutting it inside looking for Conor Grant doesn't quite find him but one back by Miller and then Conor Grant gets away from his man Argyle with a chance here to Get something on the board early in the second half. Joel Grant, cleared to his right, goes onto his left foot and shoots. Just kind of didn't get around it well enough and it goes away harmlessly wide in the end. Good sudden break by Argyle there in the opening stages of this half. Grant just unable to wrap his foot around that one. Uh, Isaac Burden it is, I'm told, that's, uh, that's come on for Joe Riley at halftime. So Isaac Burden... A uh, half-time substitute comes on at the right side of three central defenders for Argyle. We'll run you through both sides in just a second. Ball has played over the top here. Portsmouth looking to get onto the end of it and they might pick it up here on the edge. This is Owen Tegger inside the area. Shoots well held by Cooper. Read it, saved it and held it. Confidently comes out to the edge of his penalty area. It's he that is the goalkeeper up against the wind this half. And you can see that ball reaching the halfway line and stopping, even spinning back into Argyle territory where uh, Jarvis Cleal is not able to get hold of it and keep it. Next time the ball goes dead, we'll go do the teams for you. Here's Peck, Randell, Cleal, Joel Grant. That was nice football until Joel Grant's touch for Randell was just a little bit heavy. Harvey Rue will get us restarted down this left-hand side. Intercepted by Burden. But the loose ball knocking around is picked up by Flint. Referee, though, has seen a pull in there somewhere. Or perhaps a handball. I can't quite see what he's indicating. Either way, Argyle have a free kick, which Miller will take. Gets us rolling, gives it to Burden, and then retrieves it back to Miller. Just gets it caught under his feet. Has to use Michael Peck at central defence, but he's calm. Brings it out to... Joel Grant tries to return it to Peck. He's going to have to go behind him, retrieve it. But at least Argyle still have the ball under their control. Peck tries to go up the channel. And again, the wind just does its job. Have I introduced you so far to my co-commentator? His name's Brendan Storm, or Storm Brendan, whichever way you want to uh, say his name. That's the noise you can hear in the background, the wind and the rain flying across the home park pitch. And it certainly affected the first half. It was easier for Argyle defending the Barn Park end, it seemed, getting the ball forward, sorry, attacking towards the Barn Park end in the first half. Will it be different for them in this half? We'll see. But they've started brightly enough. Here's Joel Grant getting that to Jarvis Cleal. And that, the win should help it, helping the ball to hold up. Cleal keeps it in. Got Burden behind him for help. Got Randell inside, uses Randell. Tries to disguise his ball to Conor Grant and he's frustrated Randell I think with himself uh, only just it wasn't far off he just over hit the ball didn't quite tee up the Liverpudlian Grant now oh that's another late one from uh, from Minoga now this is where you have a problem in games like this because the referee didn't book that same player for something exactly like that in the first half now I understand that we don't want to get into too many yellow and red card situations in what is not quite as a competitive environment as a Sky Bet League game, but if he'd have already been booked, he wouldn't have done that tackle, and that's how people can get hurt, quite frankly. But uh, we're going to get a book in now. And that was the second time that I would argue that the player has been rather out of control making a tackle. 
free kick to Argyle. Fortunately, everyone's OK. And Peck will take the free kick for the Pilgrims. About 10 yards into Pompey territory. Lolos comes and shows, gets it to his feet. Plays a bit of a reverse pass to Burden, the substitute. He's going to have to go back to Cooper. He's going to have to work out where he hits this and fire it. Does well, does Cooper. It's a good kick. I think Grant might have been offside there, not given. But uh, Peck will get a hold of the bouncing ball, heads it down the line. Cleal, chest controls, and it goes out for a throw. I've been trying to do the teams for ages. I might as well go into it now. So Portsmouth have uh, Taylor Seymour in goal. They're a back four with Hajj Minogar at right back. Left back is Harvey Roo. Two central defenders, Jack Watmore uh, and Matt Casey. As we break off, because they're going forward, this is a chance here for Fairchild. Gets inside the areas, pushed wide. Hits the shot from a tough angle, and in the end, it's off target. Not the first time we've seen that. Runs the his basic defender's a lone centre forward is Reese Fairchild, but he's strong. Held off Peck there well, but Peck did enough of a job really to force him down a channel and away from the goal. So by the time the shot came in, he didn't have much to aim at. Did Fairchild and he rather fired it off target. Argyle have it with Randell trying to fire it into the feet of Lolos. Didn't quite come off. Here's Casey. And it's a turn there from Brigman. One of three in central for Portsmouth. Argyle have won it back. Randell trying to play it down to Lolos on the left channel. Ryan Law is streaming up the left-hand side to help him. Lolos uses him as a decoy and then tries to play it to Randell, but it was a loose pass. Good feet from uh, Flint for Portsmouth. And now down the left goes Owen Teggett, and he's gone past his man. Owen Teggett streaming on the left-hand side, now comes inside into the area. He's got two to pick out. Can he find one of them? He can. Maloney doesn't get hold of his shots. Argyle block it. Fairchild will pick up the loose one on the right-hand side. Danger not over. But that was another great chance for Maloney, not his first one in the game. Fairchild on the right flank, trying to clip it inside. Tomlinson reads it and clears it out for a throw-in. Well, Argyle have ridden their nerves a little bit there. It was a lovely break down the left-hand side from Owen Teggett. And he picked out his man as well. He picked out Maloney, who had made a run and then halted it. Oh, everything was right for Portsmouth up until that point, but Maloney shot, couldn't quite dig it out. They might have another chance here from Brigman on the edge of the box, and then Cooper should deal with that one solidly and does so. To complete the Portsmouth lineup, they've essentially got three in the uh, in the centre, who are uh, Gerard Storey, Stan Brigman, and just ahead of them, Josh Flint. Owen Teggett is to the left, Leon Maloney to the right, and the centre forward of Reese Fairchild as Casey gets it here and returns it to his goalkeeper. Clearance from Seymour. He struggled with his kicking in the first half, but we certainly can blame some of that on the conditions. That was a healthy enough clearance from him. From an Argyle perspective in goal, Michael Cooper. It's now a back three. Uh, well, it was a back three in the first half, but in the first half, Joe Riley was at the right of three central defenders. Uh, Isaac Burden has come over him at half-time, so it is Burden, Mike Peck, and the man on the ball here. Uh, Ollie Tomlinson was a back three. Right wing back is Jarvis Cleal. On the left hand side, Ryan Law. Uh, in the centre of midfield, uh, Charlie Miller, Connor Grant, and Adam Randell. And up front, Clyde Lollas. And the man on the ball right now, Joel Grant, who plays it out to the right for Cleal. Gets it away from uh, Rue and then gets away down the right hand side. The return ball, Watmore tried to bring him down and didn't do so. Inside the box comes Cleal. Can he pick a man? Dinks it. It's headed up in the air. I think it's going to go onto the roof of the net. It does, and it's a corner. What more tried to bring down Cleal, and he couldn't even get there with the foul, let alone trying to win the ball. Cleal got inside the box, and it was his chance this time to pick someone out. Tried to just dink the ball up in the air. We hear it from the replay here. I think he's trying to find Law. Law at the far post is free if he could have got it to him, but there was just not quite enough elevation on the cross. In the end, it's worked out for an Argyle corner. Most of the time from corners in the first half, Argyle tried to work it short. They've tried to do so again here, get into Conor Grant, just couldn't get enough on the end of that. You can see how much the Argyle team work on those set pieces, because from first team down to this level as well, they work, they're so different, the corners. It's one thing going short, but they, they will try so many different things. That just didn't quite come off, and you can see in Conor Grant's eyes as he just turned around there, he was frustrated that he just couldn't quite get enough on it because if he had done, that was a great chance to be 2-0. Here is Conor Grant. Can he make up for it immediately? Left-footed from the edge of the box. Thinks about shooting on several occasions. Then plays a lovely ball around the corner to his namesake, Joel. Can Joel Grant get it 
into a shooting position, works it to the left. Ryan Law fires it across, it's been flicked to the near post and in the end it's held on by the goalkeeper. Randell was there, I'm not quite sure he got the touch. I think he's going to the end will be able to let it go. Uh, for the first half, took a long time to get going. We probably saw more action in the last six or seven minutes than we did in the previous 35 to 40, but the second half has started brighter. Both sides having chances. This man has been at the focal point of it a lot of the time for Pompey, Fairchild. And as they clear, Joel Grant is offside at the other end. So Portsmouth, who have come into the game a little bit more at the start of the second half, but when they push on, it's leaving spaces and Argyle have been able to try and break. Burden, and now Randell, who's been at the heart of a lot of good stuff for Argyle. Connor Grant trying to play it to Law, and that was a bit casual. Right back is Minoga to take the throw. Into the feet of Flint. Tries to play it around the corner. Teggett thinks about shooting, then comes outside on, the left, on his left-hand side. In the end, the shot, well, the ball across ended up on target. Not sure it was a shot. But again, Cooper tends to deal with those things well. Gets hold of it and then throws out to Randell. Tries to get it to Cleal. I'm not sure Cleal is running as freely as he might do. I just got a sense after the tackle from Watmore earlier on that he tried to shrug it off, but I thought as he walked across to take a throw in the two or three minutes ago that he looked to be having a, a slight limp. And he didn't really get to that one from Randell, so hopefully he's okay. Can understand the lad wanting to be on for as long as possible in a game like this. But he needs to look after himself if he is hurt in any way. Here's Fairchild doing really well again pushing his way on the left-hand side and then clipping it around the corner to where Flint was. It just was slightly ahead of the run out Flint from midfield. But once again, Fairchild is causing hassle. This is Story asking for some help. Gets it from Minoga, who shrugs off Law. Law won't go away, and Tomlinson's there as well. But Portsmouth still have it. Maloney, Story, Joel Grant comes back to try and help out, but still the visitors have the ball. Oh, they try and work it out to Tega, and that's overhit by Rue. And it will be an Argyle throw in in the right back area. It's going to be Cleal to take. He's going to look down the line. He needs to launch it towards Grant, he didn't really get there, so it's headed back into a danger area. Nice turn by Fairchild, and well, the first bit was uh, very good, the second bit was a bit of a rush to snatch decision. He's shown some ability, he certainly looks a danger, but if he's able to turn and shoot and put it in the top corner from there, then Tuesday afternoon Central League Cup games are not in his future. It, was, it took a little bit more on there than he could really manage. Here's Cooper taking a goal kick, trying to pick out Law, but he's beaten in the air by Minoga. Well read by Peck, stopping any danger coming through the centre. Randell, slightly heavy first touch, well picked up by Brigman, but Argyle have got it back. Burden, and then Randell, still with Brigman for company. In the end, has to use Cooper, who again gets good distance on a kick considering the weather conditions. Nice touch by Lolos, well held off his man as well. Tried to play it around the corner to Law, again ambitious, but the first couple of bits there from Lolos were. A joy to watch. Now, good feet there by Maloney. Plays it through to Flint. Trying to get it across into the middle. And Fairchild scores. And it's a classic breakaway goal there for Portsmouth. A really, really nicely executed goal. Getting it through the centre. Maloney to Flint. And he only had one thing he could do, which was to try and pick out Fairchild. But the ball couldn't have been any better. And as a centre forward, a ball coming at that height for you. Six yards out. It's pretty much manner from heaven. And Reese Fairchild has equalised here for Portsmouth. Good replay of the goal from behind the goal there. It's a nice finish as the ball comes across the number nine. But the hard work had been done for him by Maloney and Flint. And Portsmouth draw level here. It's been a bright start to the second half by 
Both sides, you feel that there are plenty more goals to come. Is this one of them? Joel Grant trying to play it for and forward to Lolos. Just couldn't quite get the touch right. And Portsmouth were able to just about get it clear. That was nearly a very good answer from Argyle. But Maloney, Fairchild, Flint. They're suddenly playing with so much more confidence here, Portsmouth. And then the ball from Flint that back out to Fairchild was not quite spot on. But Fairchild will retrieve. Good tackle from Tomlinson. Stood his ground really well there. Won the ball back. Connor Grant. Ryan Law, Grant again, nice from Argyle to come out stylishly there from the back. Law round the corner to Conor Grant, this would be a heck of a goal if this ends up in something. Conor Grant down the left hand side, two to Amat, Lolos at the near post, Randell is arriving, ball comes across from Conor Grant into the clutches of the goalkeeper at the near post. He was very happy to see that one come straight at him. Good response by Argyle to having the level a go against them and indeed have Portsmouth having a, have a couple of chances. But we seem to be one team is counter-attacking and the other is counter in the counter at the moment. We've got a nice open game. And despite the conditions, what's turning into an enjoyable encounter between these two sides. Peck, Tomlinson and now Miller trying to knock it down the channel. I think he thought Ryan Law had continued a run that he'd actually halted. But the ball holds up and Casey plays it out for... Pompey, but one back by Lolos. Can he do something now? Drives at Casey, tries to commit him, edge of the box, goes past him. Can Clyde Lolos pick a ball out? Oh, he's only leading to Cleal. He's managed to shift it towards his right foot, but good defending by Tegert, who can clear. That was lovely stuff from Lolos to get the ball back. It just couldn't end in anything. Now Randell inside the area. Right-hand side tries to cross it. Good interception by, I think it was Watmore. Cleal, uh, Cleal gets it back on the right, almost in the corner flag position. Can he get the cross in? It's looped over the goalkeeper, but... Just didn't have enough bend on it. Lands on the roof of the net. A enjoyable, excitable couple of minutes here. Argyle again trying to respond very quickly to Pompey's leveller. Both teams should be credited with the fact that they're trying to play the ball out, but occasionally you can rather overplay. And as Casey had kept the ball in and had gone over the top of the Portsmouth defence, when he Rather than clearing long, he tried to play it up the line and Lolos won it back. It led to Argyle getting through. But just Portsmouth did just enough there to hold out. I thought for a second that Lolos' ball across was going to fall to clear. He was going to smash home. But they just got a foot onto the ball with the Pompey defenders just to take it away. And in the end, Cleal's shot was not a clear one. And it stays 1-1. But as I said, you can't help but feel there are plenty more goals in this game. And still the best part of half an hour to go. Peck, Randell, down the right-hand side for Cleal. I still don't think he's running properly, you know. I don't think he might not have caught that one anyway. It was maybe a little bit far ahead of him, but he looks to me as if he's there carrying something. I would run you through the, uh, the Argyle substitutions, but the only ones I have on my sheet are Ruben Wilson, Jeremiah Medin and Tyler Coombs and indeed Isaac Burden came on at half time and he's not on my sheet so can't necessarily help you there here's Conor Grant winning it in midfield, trying to prod it out to the right hand side, doesn't get there it deflects for what I thought was about to be an Argyle throw but I think the referee has given a free kick for a foul by Burden on Tegert and so it'll be a Portsmouth free kick from around about 10 or 15 yards inside their own half taken long by Harvey Rue and picked up by Maloney where Flint tries to get through and then Brigman forcefully wins the ball back Maloney from distance tries to shoot but that is high into the Barn Park end no danger on that one the ball is retrieved for Michael Cooper as once again the wind which had died a little bit in the starting moments of this uh, second half of it's got up again but Cooper's managing to kick at a good angle to get the ball forward and now Watmore fouls Joel Grant rather mistimed rather than cynical there by Watmore just put his arms out and he caught Grant in the back so Argyle will have a free kick inside the centre circle you would think given the uh, the lineup of the players that they're going to try and do it short and build from the back. They do indeed. Tomlinson out to Law, then round the corner looking for Connor Grant. That was a bit overhit. 
Now Pompey win it back. There's definitely a different spring in the step to this Portsmouth side in the second half. I was going to say they're playing a lot more confidence, but that might have been overconfidence there from Story, trying to play it to an invisible right winger, it seemed. Argyle have it back. Tomlinson, Connor Grant, Ryan Law trying to get away. It's a good tackle, though. And that was Story winning it back and making up for his error. And now it's the visitors that have a throw in right in front of the dugouts. Throw in to be taken by Minogue into the feet of Fairchild. It's won by a retreating Connor Grant and into the feet of Cooper. He's good with his feet, Michael Cooper, so he's confident enough to just pass it out short. But Argyle again, maybe a bit overconfidence of giving the ball away. Story down the right, gets the ball across into the centre and it nearly came to Flint. And then eventually Cleal just did enough. Sorry, it was Burden, I beg your pardon, did enough to just get hold of the ball and get in the way. That was a very similar chance to the one that Portsmouth scored from. The ball coming across this time, I think. It was just a little bit closer to the defenders. It wasn't quite as simple as straightforward a chance, but very, very similar move in the right channel. Fizzed across the centre. But they survived to Argyle. Minoga lost the ball to Randell. Flag goes up. Oh, it was unfortunate because Adam Randell Won the ball back there smartly. Minoga didn't see him over his left shoulder. But Joel Grant happened to be in an offside position as we just see the chance at the other end again with Burden getting the ball away. It'll be a Portsmouth sub. Just trying to see who it is that's there. Exiting. I think it's going to be Story coming off by the look of things. So Gerard Story is replaced. Hopefully we can see a... Uh, number of the man coming on. He goes into the centre of the Pompey midfield. Free kick taken by the Portsmouth goalkeeper goes all the way through out to the other side. Number 14 it is that's come on. So Harrison Brook according to my team sheet. Harrison Brook replacing Gerard Storey. I can see some activity on the Argyle bench as well. So the Pilgrims may follow that up with a substitution of their own. Looks certainly positionally to be like for like there, the Portsmouth sub. As Lolos again is wrestled for the ball, but keeps hold of it. And then does a really good job of knocking it down the line for Ryan Law, who just couldn't quite get there. Again, it's a rather agricultural approach from Watmore to get hold of it, but he manages to do so. Knocks it long, and then Fairchild tries to flick it for Maloney, who's just got there first. Gets across really well, Maloney. Can he get the shot away? Good save again from Cooper. Maloney did a lot right there. Got in front of the defenders. Had the shot, but Cooper saved. They've still got it, though, of Portsmouth. In it comes. Away by Peck. Edge of the box. Randell, calm. Gets it out to the right-hand side. Argyle can not only see away the danger, but try and break. This is, at times, resembling a game of basketball. And as soon as one team gets it, they're looking to attack immediately, not just contain. Portsmouth clear to a fashion. Fairchild coming from the back. He's coming more and more into the game from the centre forward position, but turning up all over the place. He looks a very interesting focal point as Fairchild. Portsmouth have it on their right hand side. This is Casey looking to knock a ball long. Flint's got a lot of space, but a lot of grass to run into, and he's not going to quite reach the ball that went all the way over the top. 68 minutes played here. Argyle won. Portsmouth one, and it looks like another Argyle substitution. This is Reuben Wilson, and he's going to be coming on for Joel Grant as Kevin Danskeville gives him his final instructions. Off comes Joel Grant, and on will come Reuben Wilson to join Clyde Lollis up front. Straight swap, centre forward coming on. Is he the man that can give Argyle a victory in this Central League Cup tie? And although we've, we've referred to it as a cup game several times, which is what it is, it's worth rem uh, reminding you that uh, it's not a, a one-off cup tie. It's not a, a knockout stage at the moment. Uh, we are, in fact, in a, a small group. This is the first group, the group game that Argyle have played. Also, in all, oh, there's a late tackle there on... Uh, Connor Grant by uh, I think it's Bruce.
Brigman was in. And we've seen a few tackles fly around that the referee has decided not to book anyone for. That's another one. He says to Brigman, no more. So that's his last chance. Yes, it's a group stage. Argyll are in group five of the Central League Cup alongside Bournemouth, Portsmouth and Bristol Rovers. So far, Portsmouth have played the other two sides, won one and lost one. So both Bournemouth and Rovers have played one game. We haven't played any. So all this will do will tell us where these two teams sit in the table. Portsmouth have finished their group games after this. Already on four points. So should it stay as it is, they will finish on five. Ball forward here. Fairchild is on side. Can he get there first? No, Cooper reads it well from his goal, but plays it back into trouble. And the shot comes in from distance. It's fortunately wide of the target from the return ball. I think it was Flint who fired it back in. Well, Cooper did well to get there first, read it well, but it would probably have been better served just seeing if he could smash that into the upper tier of the Mayflower rather than putting it back into trouble. In the end, the shot coming in, to be fair to Flint, with the wind the way it is and the ball arriving, it wasn't the easiest effort, but it was not un it was an unguarded goal he had to shoot at. I'll go get away with that one. They try and work it out from the back, but have played themselves into trouble. Randell tries to win it back. It falls to Pompey players. Fairchild keeps hold of it, wins it, gets it back from Brook in the 1-2, but Argyll have it again. And again, Randell calmly, but too calm, gives the ball away. Flint gets it back. Brigman tries to play it through. Well blocked in the end by the Pilgrims' defence, and Burden will try and build something for them. That's a slice into the wind and out for a throw-in. 19 minutes to go here. Argyle 1, Portsmouth 1. It's going to be Rue to take a throw in on the left-hand side. What can he find in front of him? Portsmouth have had far more of the ball, far more chances in this second half than they did in the first. Well, you could probably give some of that down to the weather conditions, but some of that down to an improvement in play from them. Certainly their front men have looked a lot more dangerous including that man who heads it down, Fairchild, and now they have another chance here as the ball comes across. Maloney couldn't get the shot away. Wins the ball back, though. It's very constricted. He tries to still play it through. Fairchild out to the right. Minoga. Fairchild again. Argyle have moved them out to the periphery, but they still get the cross in there. Tegger didn't read it in the, in the air, and Burden can get it away. And now Wilson. Argyle are rather two on two here. If Wilson can get this first, good defending by... The more experienced Watmore. Mew tries a bit of root, sorry, Rue, I should beg your pardon, tries a bit of footwork. Nearly lost it, but in the end it gets it to Watmore, tries to diag, but Argyle stop it from there. Ball is now with Burden. Right right of three central defenders. Peck looking again in towards Wilson. Wind holds it up. Watmore hauls him to the ground. There's a Touch of the rugby league player at the times about Jack Watmore, and that was another one, just throwing the man to the ground rather than trying to win a tackle. Argyle won't mind that because it's won them a free kick. Well, I was going to say in a dangerous area, but it might take all of Adam Randell's strength to just reach the penalty area with this, such as the way the wind is at the moment. The referee just halting play while a player off the ball does up their laces. <laughs> it's taken the it's taken rather a time. Meanwhile, Argar just moving some players around and Peck and Randell just having a little chat about exactly what they can do with it. This is still being done at this stage. This is the kind of point where it's, you might as well switch, switch to Velcro, mate. Here we go. Argar take the free kick short. Work it down the right-hand side. Cleo trying to right drive his man. Saw the idea. It's a good idea from Cleo. Tried to commit him and push around the outside, but... He was rather a couple of steps ahead of himself there in his brain. And I'm going to make another substitution who I am fairly certain is not on my team sheet. Because that's not a goalkeeper and it's not Jeremiah Medine. So let's see who comes on. Conor Grant goes off. And I'm going to make a, another change who I will try and confirm for you in just a second who that is. It's going to be a goal kick for Portsmouth in the uh, in the meantime. Much better kicking in the second half from Seymour, so you can probably attribute his poor first half kicking to the wind. 
That looked a bit like handball there from Rue, but not given. Ball goes back again to the goalkeeper, who again knocks it long. Headed first of all by Tomlinson, then by Peck, as Argar try and clear. From the back, a push down the right-hand side. What a great run that is from Minoga. Into the area, tries to shot. Cooper saves it at the near post. We've seen a couple of those sudden bursts from the Portsmouth right back. Now Argar try and counter again. Randell over the halfway line into Wilson. Plays it the way he sees it and fires it across to Lolos. That's unlucky. Didn't quite get there. The long legs of Casey managed to stop the ball from getting it from one centre forward to the other. Now Argyle have it again. This is Peck trying to play it through. Sorry, it's not Peck. What am I talking about? It's Lolos trying to play it through. Holds it on the left-hand side and then goes out towards... Law, can he get the cross in? Ryan Law comes inside onto his right foot, then gets it around the corner, and it was just a little bit too far in front of Ruben Wilson when he was coming in on it. Didn't quite get there. Jude Boyd, it is that's the uh, the substitute that's come on for Argyle. My apologies for that, because it's uh, I've only got a certain amount of people on my team sheet here, but Jude Boyd, it was that came on for Connor Grant. So we now have 15 minutes, just under 15 minutes remaining. And the goalkeeper to take the kick for Portsmouth launches it up the field. Good header in the, in the air by Peck, wins it for Argyle. And then Randell just trying to use his body to keep hold of the ball, did well enough. Now here is Boyd, back to Tomlinson, uses Cooper. He tries to fizz the ball out towards Law didn't get forward well enough and Argyle are going to have to try and win it back here with Lolos sweeping a tackle, won it fairly this goes out for a Portsmouth throw on the right hand side and once again another squall blows across home park and across my microphone at the moment it's trying to push Pompey forward Is Fairchild again won back this time by Peck and the referee gives a free kick he makes a motion with his arms which suggests to me that he thinks that the, uh, there was a bit of a holding offence going on Peck comes out from the back Wilson offers a short option does so and gets it into his feet has to go back to Burden Portsmouth are pushing on well Argyle under pressure but a good turn by Cleal who's kept it in tries to come inside good interjection by uh, the substitute Brook for Portsmouth and it ends up being a Pompey throw in just inside Argyle territory. Rue will take it, tries to go into Flint, who flicks it on with his head. And a second time after it was cleared, now we have it, his feet will Flint, good tackle by Miller. And then Ryan Law will get it away on the left. Picked up by Casey, that looked like a handball. Not given, but it's a throw into Argyle anyway, as it was, the bounce was slightly misjudged by the Portsmouth central defender. Throw in. Uh, taken short and then knocked out of play for another Pompey throw. As I did promise I was going to try not to talk about the weather throughout this game, but this is probably about as strong as the, the wind has been. Even our gantry up here, which is pretty <laughs> pretty solid, or well, I thought it was solid up until now, is rather shaking under me. Minoga on the right-hand side. Fairchild is pulled out there to help out. Comes inside to Brigman, trying to play the way he's facing. And uses... Fairchild again a long way out on the side but Argyle have won it back good hassling again from Lolos who's not for the first time retreated to win the ball back he's a little bit too far ahead of Miller as he tries to help the Pilgrims build and Brigman has to win it in a deep position pushed forward by Portsmouth and again look at that wind bouncing the ball through good covering by Bird and did the right thing there as right of three central defenders you could see several players on both sides completely caught out by that sudden gust Isaac Burden, best position to cover round in the correct position and get it away. But Portsmouth are looking gradually more dangerous. Chance comes in, shooting distance again from Fairchild. But it's uh, it's wide. Argyle again will have to try and build something from the back. They are persistent on trying to play it short from the back, but then when they're trying to hit it long, you're going to have that issue from from Peck. Portsmouth are doing a good job when Argyle knock it short of pushing up and just trying to stop 
what they know Argyle are going to try and do, which is pass it past them. Into the feet again here of Fairchild, played down to Josh Flint, trying to flick it over the top. Good covering from Tomlinson to get across. He was safe, smashed it into the stand. It was probably the, the safe option. So we approach the final 10 minutes here at home park. It's going to be a corner indeed. I thought it had gone out for a uh, throw in on this near side. I was slightly unsighted by that one, but it's a, it's a corner taken from the left, right footed, whipped in at head height. I think it was Randell that got the first header in. It's not cleared yet. Randell gets the second clearance in as well. Gets a bit more distance on this one. And then Brooke back out to left hand side to Maloney, the corner taker. Clips the ball in. That's gone on the wind. And in the end, Cooper does a really good job of keeping hold of that. Whips out the throw in to, throw out, I should say, to. Lolos back to goal, holds on to it, needs to keep it. You can see the wind even blowing the ball that's on the deck there. But Lolos keeps hold of it well. That was calm and sensible. And now Law, he thought about a big crossfield ball there and then changed his mind thinking about the conditions. Tomlinson to Miller. Uh, I'm just trying to slow it down. This is not a bad idea for the Pilgrims. We haven't had a lot of the ball over the last five or ten minutes. Boyd thought about coming round to Randell. Again, took the safe option. Nothing wrong with that. Tomlinson. And now this is Peck. Credit Portsmouth and their pressure. Not quite sure what's happened from coming out from their corner, but that's their left back pressuring in a right side of position. Hopefully for Argyle, there's a gap somewhere. I can see that Teggett has covered round at left back. Miller trying to get it cross field towards Cleal. It's a hard one to get hold of. Cleal got a touch on it. The referee, uh, the linesman, I think, has given a foul. He put his flag straight up in the air to begin with, which made me think it was an offside, but I think he gave the foul. Yeah, we can see from where everyone's going now. And it's going to be a Pilgrim's free kick taken short by Randell, trying to catch Portsmouth off. Cleal comes inside, left-footed, hooks it in. Wind held it, headed away. Back in a little bit by Boyd. Cleal thinks about shooting from distance, well, he did. And I think probably halfway through his foot coming back, he realised that, that wasn't probably the best option that was on didn't follow through with it and slices it out for the goal kick. Now just coming up, eight minutes remaining. Still 1-1. Lolos's goal in the first half, equaled by Fairchild in the second from Portsmouth as the ball comes over the top. And again, Burden seems to have got that position sorted as a covering defender in a three. Does well to get across and head it back to his goalkeeper. Cooper bowls it out like a James Anderson delivery. Gets it into Lolos. And then out to Law. Comes inside. Glides on the ball. Miller. And now Tomlinson. That's the turn on it. Pressured. But trying to get it down the line. Continuing the philosophy. But it's not worked. Argyle have given the ball away. That's a lovely little flick by Maloney. Gets into the area. Can he pick out a shot or a cross? No. Oh, again, it's sort of neither. And it's dribbled itself away. It stayed in play, actually. Well played from Burden, keeping it in, but then gives the ball away, trying to play it back forward. Brooke. So we've seen a few more mistakes creep into this game as players tire under these difficult conditions. And it comes from Teggett, well read by Cooper. Grabs hold of it. And again, it's used his hands to get it away rather than his feet. Law around the corner, blocked by Casey, but now he's at a position if Argyle can get back forward. Good covering by Brigman as he couldn't quite get the ball to Lolos. And Brigman again trying to get out to the left. Teggett was the intended recipient. It didn't quite get there. Intercepted by Burden. But a throw in for Portsmouth. Rue to take. Throws it, gets it back. And then beats a man. He's in a good position to cross here. It's not a bad delivery to the near post. And I assume the goalkeeper gave a good shout there to his defender because I thought that Michael Peck was about to send it away, but he left it and Cooper was there to grab hold. Good communication from those two, all know each other very well from their journeys through the Argyle Academy. Cooper's low kick, not the best one, but the clearance is poor from a Portsmouth perspective as well. In the end, what more goes back to his keeper. Cleared away long, headed by Tomlinson. And again, Portsmouth try and knock it from deep. He was plenty onside there. Was Flint Argyle were playing him on, covering his Miller, the central midfielder. 
And he does enough to get it back to Cooper, who clears away. Lolos picks it up on the left-hand side. He's had a good game, Lolos, in doing stuff like that. Coming deep and trying to keep hold of the ball. And then it's worked out a really nice ball to Randell. What a first touch from Randell. Unfortunately, he and Cleal slightly at cross purposes again. Not quite reading each other's run. The first touch from Handel was exceptional at taking that ball out of the air. Just couldn't quite get the timing of their runs together, the two on the right-hand side. No blame to be apportioned there, just a little bit of miscoms. As we come up to just nearly five minutes remaining, throwing down the line. Fairchild strong, trying to hold off Burden. Drew the free kick in the end there. Well, go will try and get themselves back in position. Portsmouth, have they got something in them to try and turn this game around? Went into the half-time break, a goal down. But they equalised quite early in the second half and have had chances to win it. So have Argyle mind. But Portsmouth get it forward here. Fairchild, good interception by Randell. But Fairchild gets the best of part two of that. Now trying to play it around the corner. It's a lovely ball towards Flint. He's trying to play it through past keeper. Lovely block by Michael Cooper. Again, stand, stood up for a long time, kept his body strong and made a vital save. And now Wilson, Randell and now Argyle break at the other end. This is great end-to-end -end stuff. Can Cleal get there first? He can. Cuts inside into the area. Back outside. Tries to get the cross in. That's good defending from Rue. Did really well to block the cross. Argyle still have it. Randell, Law, edge of the box. Trying to get himself some space to shoot. Wasn't really there. And now between Brook and Brigman, Portsmouth can come away. Both teams looking to win this and get the ball through the middle here. Now Fairchild has a chance, flags up. Flags up, I did think he was offside. Assistant referee just making sure that they had it absolutely right. We talked about this resembling a bit of a game of basketball. Here was the chance here from Grant. Oh, well he's done really well, Cooper. You can see how much he keeps his body up. Doesn't dive at the feet of the attacker keeps himself as big as he can and it paid off and not for the first time today makes a very very important interjection Randell looks to go down the line hits against the back of his teammate again unfortunate between Randell and Jarvis Cleo it's just the way it's fallen and it clatters off the back of the Argyle wing back and Pompey have a throw in Rue in towards Grant, that's what Grant, uh, Flint, I beg your pardon. Now Fairchild, left-hand side, working his way inside, then back outside, holds it up, has to go all the way back. Porks will still have it, that's a good tackle by Lolos, or at least to force them back. On the right-hand side is no good, tries to go past Ryan Law, who uses his body well, read that. And the push came in the back to win Argyle, the free kick in their own half as we just see that again just does enough there Law to get his body in the way that was intelligent and now he goes down the left from an attacking perspective good header inside looking for Wilson he's blocked off by Casey Portsmouth have enough bodies back there to get hold of it and come away they work it out to the left hand side but that's over hit by Rue looking for Teggett and I said it a few minutes ago but you can just see a few more of those mistakes creeping into the game it's kind of understandable. Right now, there's been a bit of a, a lull in the uh, the weather conditions. Uh, it's not quite so drastic as it's been, but can't have been an easy game to have played in through this afternoon. And indeed, as we see Stan Brigman wander over to the touchline, his afternoon has ended with just a couple of minutes left on the clock. And he is replaced by... Someone who I'll tell you who he is when he turns around and shows me his number. I'll tell you who that is in just a second. Mark, I'll take the throw in down the right hand side. Randell tries to play it through. Headed forward again by Miller. And then Brooke, who was an earlier substitute, gets hold of it. Portsmouth clear down the left hand side. Again, it's Fairchild running the channel well, but well matched up by Mike Peck. Portsmouth throw again down the left hand side. Rue to take into the feet of Flint, tries to play it back to Brooke. Wilson should get there first, reads it, and then dynamically gets hold of it and tries to play it through to Law. It'll get to the left back in the end. Didn't get there immediately. Can now tell you that it was Ethan Robb that came on for 
Portsmouth at number 12. That was the presumably final substitution of the game. Just under a minute remaining. Argyle throw, left-hand side. Lolos thinks about taking it quickly, but was presumably told to get the shape back and be in a position to try and score, if possible. Here's Jude Boyd to Ryan Law. Once again, good Portsmouth pressure, not letting Argyle out of the pocket. Tomlinson with a clip down the line. Casey hooks it over his head, gets it forward. Flick from Fairchild. Um, Peck had to be quick about it. Did well, retrieved it, went back to Cooper. Who keeps the ball at his feet, looking for the right pass out. And in the end, does play it like a sweeper into Wilson. And then Miller to Cleal. Thought about clipping one forward, then decided to try and run it himself. Gets towards the edge of the box, still keeps hold of it, Cleal. And then the clip, it's just going to go over the top. And it just wasn't the final delivery he'd have been looking for. This build-up was really nice. Hold on to the ball, held the defenders off. I think in some ways he was thinking that a cross might deflect and get him a corner in the end. All he could do was just dink it over the top. So we've gone past the 19. There's been a couple of substitutions. One goal, but I don't remember too many long injuries. And you tend not to have masses of injury time in games like this. And in some failing light around home park, I wouldn't have thought this game would go on much longer as Portsmouth clear from one goalkeeper to another. Michael Cooper picks it up, or rather doesn't actually, no he does, on the edge of the area, and then bowls it out to Law. And he gets caught on it, does Law, and Portsmouth might have one final chance here. Down the right-hand side, Minoga cuts it back. Maloney crosses, good header from Peck, had to be. As Fairchild was the other side of him, Portsmouth might get another chance to sling it in. Maloney again, was that get a deflection? It did, so a corner. We've played 91 minutes. This is probably going to be all she wrote after this, but there's going to be a chance for Portsmouth one more time. And with the win the way it is, I think I'd be looking to try and hang this up around the penalty spot and let the wind do some damage and whip it in. Let's see what happens. Left-footed corner from the right. <laughs> and the ball just runs away from Josh Flint to try, to try and make this a, an anticlimactic ending. He's just trying to, he's almost got to screw the ball into the ground just to get it to stay still and stop oscillating from him. In the end he gets there and takes it. Left-footed, it's a clip up in the air. Flicked on, it might fall to Watmore to try and hook it goalwards. That's over the bar. In fact, it's wide as well. And so that Portsmouth corner came to rather nothing. I don't. I get the feeling that was not the delivery that the, uh, the taker, Josh Flint, would have wanted to do, but it was the only way he could get the ball still and just hit it quickly before the ball ran away. So Cooper, to take the goal kick, is this the last action of this game? We've gone past 92 minutes. Cooper takes, and the whistle blows, and we end the afternoon with a 1-1 draw. And it seems that basically the first half pattern was simply flipped around for the second because Argyle had the better of the first half. Chances from Connor Grant and Joel Grant stood out as being the best efforts until right towards the end of the half. Clyde Lolos curled into the top corner to give the Pilgrims a 1-0 lead. But in the second half, Portsmouth came right back into it and it was their centre forward, Reese Fairchild, who got on the end of a very fine Pompey move to knock home from close range to make it 1-1. Both teams had chances to win it. Pompey probably more so in the second period. But in the end, it finishes one apiece. And Portsmouth finished their Central League Cup uh, matches, having played three games with five points. Argyle, this is their first one. And it gets them underway with a single point. There'll be more of these games to come, and we'll obviously keep you updated on all of that uh, via our website, via these channels. We are going to bring you more Central League fixtures here on iFollow uh, as the season goes on. I was going to say weather permitting, but if we got through today's game, then I think we can get through pretty much anything because it has been pretty wild out here, and those players will have known that they've done some work today. But it was uh, a good encounter, very enjoyable, I thought, after the first half hour's uh, play was a little bit stodgy. Certainly the end of the first half and the second half was entertaining, to say the least. So we'll endeavour to bring you some highlights in, uh, in very short order so uh, we can have a look at some, uh, some more action in the game. I'm sure you'll agree that it was uh, plenty to look back on. So we're going back to some first half instances first. This was probably a good instance of what the, the the wind was doing for you. And here's Joel Grant on the edge of the box just digging out a shot. That was the first real shot on target 
that the goalkeeper had to deal with from a Pompey perspective. And you see from our camera behind the goal there, you really get to see that it was uh, a good save. This was when Joe Riley shot from distance. And I think we'll probably clip this up into two bits like in the first half, but uh, a chance comes straight after that. So Riley shooting from distance well, saved from the goalkeeper. But if we were to let that go on a little bit more, we'd get to this point, which is where Lolos, with a nice little trick, flicked it to Conor Grant, and we thought that was the one nil lead, but the flag was up at the top of the, the pitch for an offside. Can't really tell from that angle, but it was, we think, a fair decision. This is Argar taking the lead, though. Randell had done some great work in the build-up to that, winning the ball back. A nice little disguise pass into the feet of Lolos, who touches once, and then his second hit. Here's a curler into the top corner, and this is the best angle. Shows you getting it out from under his feet, and that's unstoppable. No goalkeeper is going to think they can get to that. This, though, a fantastic double save, almost straight away afterwards by Michael Cooper. Uh, at the time, I questioned his first save, but you can see from behind the goal what a good save it was, and the second one even better from Argyle's young stopper. But this was the equaliser quite early in the second half. What you don't see before that is some good build up work, which got the ball to Flint, and then Fairchild finishing from relatively close range with a lovely ball across and perfect for a striker just to knock home and make it 1-1. This was Maloney getting across a couple of men and again Cooper making the save. And we'll see another one shortly where Michael Cooper manages to stand up for a long time, doesn't commit himself to going to ground and uses that to good effect. This is the other one. In it comes to Flint. Again, Cooper reading it, keeping his body up, palming it away. But that looks your know, absolute favourite all day long, the forward there looking like he could win it. So in the end, Michael Cooper might go down as one of the uh, the Argyle heroes to at least make sure it was a one point and not none. But there were plenty of good performances on display for manager Ryan Lowe to think about going forward for first team uh, issues and also being this, the January window. Are play players going to go out on loan or so forth? There's plenty of uh, incentive for those players to have had a good game today. And there were plenty of good performances across the Argyle side. So that's uh, all we have for you today from uh, the Central League game. But don't forget, on Saturday to come, it is Argyle at home to Mansfield Town in Skybet League 2. We would love to have you here at Home Park to fill up the Theatre of Greens again. Come and experience the new Mayflower Grandstand if you haven't already uh, and get behind Ryan Lowe and his team. But if you are unable to make it, remember that we have coverage as ever here on iFollow. If you are an international subscriber or an um, international match pass uh, user, you'll be able to uh, watch the game as well as getting our bespoke commentary and all the things you got today, such as the highlights, uh, etc. Um, if you are domestic, we will be able to bring you commentary uh, only because it's a Saturday three o'clock fixture. But don't forget that later on in the season, when there are Tuesday night games, we are able to bring you the coverage uh, domestically as well. So we hope you've enjoyed this iFollow presentation for you for free this afternoon here on iFollow on pafc.co.uk and we hope you stick with us for other broadcasts later on in the season. For now, we'll see you on Saturday against Mansfield. Thanks very much.